If you're doing this, standing up through the shot, and no matter what you do, you cannot stay down and fix that problem. Well, this is the video for you, because I'm gonna show you the exact reasons of why you stand up, because you're only gonna fix this problem if you can identify the reason why or the root cause to why you do the issue. So I'm gonna get into the five main reasons to why you stand up and a fix for each reason. So let's get to it. So number one, posture. So common. Now, this is the same for golfers who struggle to, let's say, rotate through the golf ball. If you struggle with downswing rotation, this applies the same to you, but very much so for standing up, going through the shot. I see golfers sent out to the golf ball way too flexed, we can call it. So there's so much hip hinge, little bit of a curve to the lower spine here, a little bit of extension, and a dead straight back to where the armpits are in front of the toes there. So this will cause the pelvis to shoot underneath the body, whether we see it for a player in the backswing, or we see it for a player in the downswing. Because if that pelvis starts to shoot underneath the body, that is going to make the upper body move back stand up and come out of the posture. Because when the pelvis moves underneath, the spine goes into extension. So if the pelvis goes under, spine has to get straight, upper body has to move back out of that bent over posture. So for golfers who are trying to do all the drills in the world to stay down through the golf ball with that poor posture, it's never gonna happen. Imagine you're on a tightrope, this is a great analogy. You're on a tightrope trying to balance yourself. You're over a canyon. If you fall, you fell into the canyon. If you're in this position, what is your body gonna do? Because the weight's gonna be too much onto the toes, too much in the canyon, it's gonna quickly move backwards to rebalance itself. It's the same thing that's happening to the golf swing. You will always have that quick pop-up, no matter what you try. So the way to fix this is getting yourself in better posture. So what I want you to do is to have a little bit more of a posture like this. So where you can see here, pelvis is a little bit more tucked underneath me, just a slight bend in the knees, much straighter lower back, no lower back extension here. And you can see now I'm gradually rounded with my upper and mid back there. So this is gonna help me to one, when I turn, be able to stay in posture and then be able to move the pelvis back, chest down going through the golf ball to be able to stay in my posture. It's gonna be far easier for you to do. The little way to do this is to stand pretty much with almost straight legs again. So tiny bend in them and stand dead upright and hold the club out in front of you just like this. So dead straight back. Now what I want you to do is get the club behind the golf ball with just relaxing your mid and let's say upper back. So just relaxing mid and upper back so the club gets behind the golf ball. Boom, and there we go. Pelvis is still underneath me. I've got that nice back structure. Now I'm in a better spot. If let's say you've got long arms like me and you wanna take a little shuffle back, you feel a little bit too close, absolutely you can do so, but don't do it compromising your posture. So get in that posture, do that routine, and you're gonna fix one of the root causes you're gonna have a far better time staying in your posture. So guys, a brand new course is now live on my skill list and that is fixing your early extension masterclass. And in this course, absolutely everything you need to know about how to fix early extension and everything you need to know about early extension and what causes it. So we get into the root causes, everything that causes that problem and in depth. And then we get into exactly what to do to fix each one of those root causes with the optimized practice structure. And with all my students you see, let's say from my YouTube videos here, where I do videos on how they fix their early extension, those crazy big gains they make in a very short space of time, it's the same practice structure I've used with every single one of those students. I've achieved massive success in fixing this problem fast. Early extension is only a big issue in the golf swing if you don't know how to tackle it. When you know how to tackle it, it is very straightforward and I give you all the tools to be able to fix it in no time in this course. So there's a link in the description that takes you straight to my Skillist page, so the website of Skillist. And if you scroll down, you'll see online courses. It will be right there. Brand new course, absolutely brilliant. There's tons of info in there. It's absolutely gonna be the most comprehensive guide to fix your early extension that you've ever seen online. So number two, and that is what your right arm or trail arm is doing in the backswing and how it influences your posture in the downswing to stand up. So what I see so many people do, they move their right arm back like this, like they're starting a lawnmower. So getting their elbow to where it quickly shoots behind the middle of their body, the seam line, and then gets into this internally rotated shoulder position. So just where the elbow is pointing behind you. How this can cause you to stand up and lose your posture is as you start to move down, one, the right arm, the trail arm is gonna be stuck behind your body. So it's gonna be behind there. So one way from this that your body can stand up is to 
fire the right arm to get back in front of the body. That's straightening coming into the golf ball. But if you did that without coming out of posture, you're going to massively have the club go on the outside of the ball line. You could fat it and you could shank it as well. So if you hit a good golf shot there to make way for that right arm to get back out in front of you again, you have to move the upper body back out of your posture to be able to hit the golf ball. So not functional at all. Another way for golfers, when they have that movement or that right elbow being behind them from the lawnmower backswing, it can cause, because of that internal trail shoulder, right shoulder rotation that causes, that is a main driver of a steep shaft in the downswing. When that shaft is vertical because of this, again, for you to hit the golf ball solidly, you have to re-shallow the golf club. You have to shallow it later. So standing up, coming out the posture, we'll get that club re-shallowing, but again, everything's gonna stall out going through the golf ball. You're gonna stand up, you're gonna pop out, out the shot. So our way to fix that issue is to have a much better movement of that tray arm. A good little drill I like to do with students to train this is hitting balls with one arm, but you get your left hand and you put it behind your elbow. So all you're doing there, you're now preventing this tray arm, this right arm, from pulling behind you. So, because your hand is blocking it. So all you're gonna do from there is swing up and swing through, keeping that back of your left hand, back of your lead hand, behind that elbow, and just stopping it from going behind you. Then you're gonna be able to stay in posture way easier, and you could hit some little balls doing it. So just hit one here, of course, you're doing it with one arm, so it's not gonna be the best shot. Into a net is gonna be brilliant for this, so just keeping that arm in front. There we go, and then of course, you could get a bunch of reps in there, and then from there, what you can do, is then have that same feel, replicate that into the golf ball. So that same feel, let's say I've done a lot of reps there with just the right arm only. And there we go, a much, much better shot. So the third reason to why you are standing up going through the golf ball is again, rooting from the backswing. So this is why I'll see some golfers get up to top of their swing and their head lunges forward. So their head's moving closer to the golf ball down and forward. Whenever you move down the golf swing, you also move a little bit forward unless some side bend is applied to it at the same time. So going down and forward. So why does that cause you to stand up? Because of course, if you have moved down and closer to the golf ball, more forward, you have got to then raise back up to back out the way. Because if you went more forward and down and you stayed there and turned all the way, the weight's going to be too far into the toes because wherever that head goes, the weight's going to go also. So then as you turn down, you'll probably lose your posture, but that club's going to be way too far outside the ball line. You'll shank it again. So you have to have that head back in up to make way for the club to pass through the golf ball for a good strike. Very clear as day one. The way to fix this is a lot of repetitions via doing this. So what we want to do, of course, keep yourself in good posture. So I'm into my very muddy net, as you could already see from the mat. So it's rained nonstop for a month and a half. So I'm lucky I could even get out and film. So here we go. Stand against a wall. It doesn't have to be a netting. It can just be a wall, about half a club's distance or so. And I want you to then get a club, put it across your shoulders. You could even grip it short like this here. And I want you to turn and make sure your head is not hitting the wall or netting. So and you can do that then for the downswing and turn through. So make sure that head's not hitting the netting. Get the feeling of that. And that's going to be absolutely brilliant because you're going to get feedback straight away. And you really have to do a ton and a ton of reps doing that. Because if you can keep that head in a better front space here, so it's not moving as far forward, of course, now there isn't a necessity to stand it up to get out of the way in that downswing. So a ton of that drill, the wall drill there. I do this with a ton of my students who have this issue. It's a very common issue. And then you're going to be able to stay in posture way better and not stand up. So number four, and that is your club face. So again, this can be backswing or this could even be downswing. So this is your club face is too closed or too open. So let's say open first. Now, if you are in your swing, let's say here early in the backswing, your club face flares open to where the toes are pointing up to the sky or God forbid behind. So from there, if you keep and maintain that open club face through your swing, What's going to happen if you stay in your posture? The club is going to be way too open. You're going to hit it miles right. So the body standing up, why that happens from this is because it's the body putting on the rotational brakes, so the brakes for your rotation, to be able to square up the shot. Because if you stay down on the golf ball and turn, it's going to go right. So you have to back up out the way to have the arms pass through so they could either have time to early release, which squares up an open face, or 
lots and lots of forearm rotation, which also squares up the face. So that is, again, open face. Your club face angle can make a huge difference to how you move through the golf ball. If you are having a nice square face, so here in the early swing, you can see that club face is matching my spine angle. Maintain that going through the swing. I can stay in my posture nicely. That club's going to return to the ball square. So for closed face, this is really common for golfers standing up. Really, really common. So Coming back, let's say again in the early swing, club face pointing down towards the ground. So many golfers are trying to play with a really strong grip because they've been told it fixes a slice and it does fix a slice. It'll get the club face a little bit more close to path, absolutely. But you'll have a whole host of different problems come from that. I'm not a fan of fixing the problem, but then replacing it with loads of other problems. So this is one that you're going to see it's going to come from a really close face. So club face pointing towards the ground in the early swing and up towards the sky. And then we can see if that club face remains closed, if I stay in my posture in turn, the club face is just generally going to be too sharp. I'm going to hit it way left. So that's where players will have to stand their body up. They'll have to come out their posture, stand up through the shot, because that makes the hands move higher. And when the hands get higher, the club face opens up. So then you're going to hit it more towards your target because it's not going to get too open. Might do in some cases, but more than likely, it will just get you to where it'll point down the target. But then you'll be reliant on how well can you stand up. You'll always stand up from there. So again, the fix for this. First and foremost, make sure your grip's okay. So you can even know strong grips are really hard to make you know, them work for players. Only the top players can really make a strong grip work really well because of their athleticism, how fast they can swing and how good they can turn. But you can swing with every grip, you can do. But the easier way to do it is just to go standard. So go with a two and a half knuckle grip. I would always recommend to buy a grip trainer for a lot of players. So standard grips in two and a half knuckles on that left hand and the right hand there. The V between your thumb and the meat of the hand pointing towards kind of like right armpit area. If you can do that, you're gonna have a much better chance to have a square of face. There's loads of reasons. Wrist angles could be a reason for having square, closed or open. So, but main number one is check your grip first and foremost. Don't overlook the basic things. So have a nice grip, nice and standard. That's gonna help you have that square of face and that's gonna make it easier to stay in your posture. So number five, this is something I talk about all the time on the channel and that is making sure your hips are not going towards the golf ball in the backswing. So you can see pretty much all of these are faults that originate from the backswing. So a lot of players obsess about getting into good downswing positions, but their backswing is quite honestly terrible. So it's causing these issues to happen. And the hips are a huge one. I see this every single day in my lessons, every day. So, and this is that right hip, as you move back in the backswing, slightly and gradually moving towards the golf ball. If your hips move towards the golf ball, more underneath the body, as you start the downswing, the hips are gonna to continue to move underneath you. And then what's that going to do? As we know, that's going to make the spine extend. So that's going to make the upper body go up and back, that standing up coming out of your posture. So if you move that pelvis forward, there is no chance that you are going to stay down on that shot. No hope. So you have got to get that right hip working more back. You have to do it. So having that right hip work more back is going to help the hips stay back in the downswing. You're moving into flexion, which is the opposite to extension, which is the opposite to standing up. So flexion, staying down is not, it's absolutely, sorry, what we want. What we don't want is extension slash standing up. So we want to move into more flexion here. So let's get ourselves to getting that right hip really turned back there. And then that's going to make it easier to stay and get that left side moving back to stay in our posture. When that left hip moves back, that forces the right, the upper body to move down and that's staying in your posture. So a little drill to do. That is one I've been using a little bit recently because, of course, you're probably all thinking of people who've been watching my channel regularly. You're thinking this is the chair drill for sure. And absolutely, that would be great. But this is another good one. So again, this very muddy club. Everything's really muddy. Look at my shoes. State of them. So... Unfortunately, that's unavoidable with how my net is. <laughs> so grab a club, grab an old wedge here. So what I want you to do, because we're going to target this hip stuff in the backswing, put the club underneath your heel, so your left heel. Then I want you to get the club to where the shaft has got a little bit of a gap between your right calf and the shaft there. So if I'm moving forward in my backswing with the hips, that gap between my leg and the shaft is going to get greater. It's going to get bigger. So what I want to do, I want to get that left leg moving more towards 
that shaft there. So that's getting my right hip to move more back to be able to do so. So if I can touch that shaft behind my right leg there with my right leg, that means I'm gonna be moving that pelvis a little bit more back. So having that goal is gonna be absolutely brilliant, just a small gap, and then hit that with your right calf in that backswing, and your hips are gonna be staying back, and you're gonna have a much better chance to stay in your posture. So those are the five root causes and a fix for each one of them. So next time you're at the driving range or you're practicing, film your swing, have a good look at it. Look at these points there, see if you're doing any of it. And let's say if you're even not doing those, because there is more reasons to standing up, absolutely. These are just the main ones in there. There's always a link in the description to get my help online with online lessons on Skillist, which is the main and only way that I give lessons now is online via Skillist. It's the best way to have lessons full stop. So I'll be able to help you out. Absolutely, I'll be more than happy to help you with your game if you need my help. So if you enjoyed the video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction, just like this. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.